Okay, to get back on time here, we're going to start again. So welcome everyone to our next session of our Great Lakes Aquaculture Day. This will be on best management practices. My name is Emma Weirma, Aquaculture Outreach Specialist for the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility, as well as Wisconsin Sea Grant. For this session, our presenter here with us is Stacy Schultz. Director of Marketing, as well as Sustainability Coordinator for Fortune Fish and Gourmet. So thank you so much for being with us today and I will hand it over to you. Excellent. So just a little bit about uh, Fortune. Um, we are located in uh, Illinois, just off of uh, O'Hare Airport. Uh, we're a seafood processor and distributor. Uh, we have a specialty line of gourmet foods. Um, our primary, um, like Matt spoke to earlier, our primary mode of meeting our customers' needs is by making customer service our top priority. Uh, we are an FDA regulated uh, facility. We have a, a, tons of independent third party sanitation um, audits. We're SQF or food for food safety certification. And we are best aquaculture product. Um, certified and aquaculture sustainability um, certified. Uh, we have over a hundred delivery trucks throughout the Midwest, next. And this is our service area. So all the way basically from uh, the Northern part of the United States throughout the Midwest down to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we have facilities in Kansas City, uh, Missouri, and we have Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, Chicago, Illinois, and um, Alabama. We have uh, three operations down there. So um, all of those uh, facilities do processing. Next. Uh, as far as best practices are concerned, you, we look at um, how sustainable the fishery is or how sustainable the aquaculture um, facility or process is. And this is kind of how an easy um, explanation definition of sustainability as a characteristic or a process uh, state that can be maintained at a certain level indefinitely. So we always say we impact our ecosystems through what we eat. The choices that we make for dinner can harm or hurt the environment, but we can also heal and restore it by choosing the right thing. Um, pillars of sustainability that we um, as Fortune uh, stand by are that there's an environmental pillar, an economic pillar, and social. So it's not all about the environment. Um, it's not all about how everything is in fact affected um, environmentally. Uh, there's an economic uh, point, you know, as we're all kind of going through COVID right now, we're realizing how important uh, that piece of the puzzle is. And then socially um, with our communities, making sure that people are employed, having healthy lifestyles. Um, we already know that seafood is good for the environment and very sustainable. Um, if you look at it compared to other proteins, I mean, here are some food conversion ratios and CO2 emissions data. Um, we don't have to fight that good fight anymore. Um, we know this protein is sustainable, it's good for the environment, uh, it's good for climate change, but we have a lot of organizations um, that, that rank or rate sustainability and they kind of pick apart that um, the sustainable aspects of seafood that's fisheries and aquaculture. So here are some of the organizations, just a handful that look at the different aspects of sustainability in seafood. Next. Um, just to clarify, there are kind of two different ways to look at sustainability in seafood. There's rating and there's certifying. Uh, there's systems like rating systems that just classify or rank someone or something based on a cooperative assessment of their quality standard or performance. So that would be like the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch Program. Uh, they recently um, have transformed into 
an operation that is not looking at the sustainable aspects of aquaculture based on the individual facilities or the individual uh, farms. They're looking at it based on like region. So Regal Springs Tilapia in Honduras is BAP or best aquaculture practice certified. They're uh, ASC certified um, by the Aquaculture Stewardship Council um, and they were previously rated green. But when they look at, when Monterey Bay Aquarium looks at the overall systems in Honduras and how they all compare, they've, they've given all of the Honduras farms a yellow because even though Regal Springs does a really great job and is very sustainable, there are some farms in the region that aren't as sustainable. So they're looking at rating the whole system and the whole, the whole region. Uh, so that could be detrimental to someone like Regal Springs who's doing a really great job, um, but it also motivates them to get the entire region involved in bringing the, the whole local uh, aquaculture production up to a certain level. Certifying is attesting or confirming to a formal statement. So officially recognizing a farm uh, or facility as possessing certain qualifications or meeting certain standards. So they're actually going in and certifying and looking at the feed production, uh, the, uh, the energy usage, how the workers are being treated, all certain elements to the actual um, specific farm or fishery. Next. So some of the best management practice that Fortune looks like when working with uh, aquaculture facilities or farms, we look at, uh, like I mentioned, the three different pillars, environment, economic, and social. Um, as far as the environment, is, are they following regulations? Um, are they, are the feed ingredients sustainable? Are they being sourced in a, in a proper way? Um, what are the water and energy uses of that facility? Um, and, in mo and like I mentioned before, the environmental impact of aquaculture is much less than any other uh, major protein. Um, economically, we look at, you know, is it priced well? Um, it has to be, has to, you can't outprice your, your market. Uh, you may have a wonderful trout farm and a great story, but if the product is too expensive, um, it's, not, it's not sustainable for, for everybody. You want to be able to feed this healthy protein to millions and millions of Americans. Um, is the labor that is being used to produce this product, uh, is everybody being paid a fair wage? Is everybody being treated properly? That has become more and more important in today's um, in, in today's business. Um, is, the, is there still uh, availability for margin, you know, for us to make a margin? So we're a distributor and a processor. We're, we're actually processing the fish, so that costs us money. Um, we're, we're moving the product to um, stores, to high-end restaurants, and, and we still need to make some money off of that product also. So you have to leave room for a margin for down the line. And socially, like I mentioned, you know, is, it, is there a fair wage being provided to your labor force? Um, are you following labor laws? Um, is inclusion and diversity um, being taken into account into your organization? And how involved are you in the community? Uh, Fortune is very involved in our local and regional community. And we feel that that's very important, uh, not only to spread the word about good, healthy seafood, but just to be a good, good player in, in business and in, the, in, in society, you know? So do you, as a company, as an aquaculture facility, are you giving back to your community and sharing the wealth? Um, also a little bit of what Matt mentioned is, you know, are you, are you involved in your market? Um, is your product consistent? Uh, you need to be able to produce a product year round um, and be able to have a consistent supply. Uh, once that supply kind of dries up, you lose your customer base. 
Um, it's kind of like going to the grocery store and they're out of, let's say your favorite cereal. Um, you don't go back to that store for that favorite cereal. You find a different favorite cereal or new one, or you, you go to another store and you find something very similar. Um, you have to be able to produce your product year round. Um, and number one, it has to taste good. Um, a lot of people produce a product, it's healthy, it's beautiful, um, but it has an off flavor. Um, one of the number one things that we look for when we're selling a product is, does it taste good? Can we sell this? Um, as I mentioned, is it price competitive? You cannot outprice your market. Uh, it's really tough. You know, you have a great product. Uh, you put a lot of work into it. You're kind of a, a niche um, market. You've done all your due diligence. Um, you've given your heart and your soul into this product. But, um, and you've been told you could get a premium price for it. That, that's great and all, but there's tons of other people producing a very similar product and, and you have to be able to be competitive. Um, look at your competition. Look at the price that they're selling it for. Look at what they're selling. Um, that market research, I cannot stress enough, uh, like Mar Matt said, is very important. You know, you can't be just another trout farmer. Um, if, if, if someone's buying trout from us, you know, we can't have eight different types of trout. They're all very similar when they come onto the plate. And most of them have a really wonderful story and are very sustainable to begin with. I'm not knocking trout. Trout is great. It is amazing. And there's plenty of room for it in the market, um, in different markets, in local markets. Um, but just make sure that you're not producing the same exact product that your neighbor is. Uh, marketing. Um, that is my background. Um, along with marine biology, but um, having a website, you, you'd, be, um, you'd be amazed at how many fishermen, farmers do not have websites to tell that story about the amazing product that they have. Um, it helps with transparency, you know, where it came from, how it was farmed, what it was fed, what your food conversion ratio is, all that wonderful stuff and information that you've worked so hard to to make your product sustainable, but you need to sell that message. Provide images of your product. Um, whole fish pictures are very hard to come by. It's amazing. Um, some people have only seen fillets. They go to the grocery store, they see what that looks like, but they've never seen what a whole fish looks like. And uh, I feel like that's very important to see the health of the animal and that it's being treated properly. Packaging, um, do not, um, do not slack on your packaging. People want a clear, clean package. Um, think about when you go to the store and what you buy and do you buy some, something that's got like a bunch of cartoon characters on it and, and screams that it's healthy at you. No, you want something that's classic and clean and, and does have those health mottos on there. Um, we recently um, are marketing uh, some frozen meals even and we're reaching out to um, a consulting company that just does some market research. You know, it's very easy to spend a couple dollars per person for like six questions to get kind of some market research for people who like actually who do the shopping, um, not just the people who are sitting in your, your office at your aquaculture facility and you look around and you want some new packaging for smoked fish and you all kind of agree that it's pretty. No, reach out to others, um, do your market research. Uh, this is our website. Um, if you have any further questions or need any assistance, you can reach out here. There's also my, my email address, which is Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y, at fortunefishco.net. Um, so I have uh, hopefully given plenty of time for questions, uh, if anybody has any. Thank you so much, Stacey. That was a great presentation on your company's best management practices and sustainability. A lot of great tips there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys so much for having me today. Um, uh, the Great Lakes is very near and dear to my heart. Um, even though I live here in Chicago, I grew up in Michigan, uh, went to Michigan State, and um, have practiced aquaculture in several different areas. So um, uh, I really, it is near and dear to my heart. So I appreciate this. Thanks. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for taking the time with us today.